Hi and welcome to the next segment of the Klingberg Wing Mark II development. I'm Raul Klingberg, your host. I'm the developer of the original Klingberg Wing. Uh, if you've been watching my uh, series, I'm in the process of developing a new foot launch sailplane and right now I'm working on materials development. I'm currently looking at a variety of materials for the aft surface of the wing. That would be the portion of the wing that's aft of the spar. Uh, for this particular aircraft, it's quite challenging because we need extremely high strength to weight ratio, yet I want to have uh, a system that the average home builder could uh, complete uh, with average hand tools. Uh, I've looked at a wide variety of materials, uh, all of composite nature. Uh, here's one of the most likely candidates. This is a roar cell foam, uh, one millimeter thick. It has a outer surface of 1.7 ounce Kevlar and an inside surface of a Kevlar fiberglass scrim. Uh, this is extremely lightweight. It's 12 grams uh, for this piece, which works out to about just slightly under one ounce per square foot. Keep in mind that for every ounce that gets added to the wing surface, uh, that translates into almost nine pounds of aircraft weight. So saving every uh, possible ounce is uh, absolutely critical, but we can't sacrifice uh, weight and durability and buildability. Uh, I've been through a lot of samples here and even more that I'm not showing you. Uh, they have uh, a variety of successes and failures. Uh, the material I like the most is uh, Devenicel Core. Um, coming up here. Where is it? There it is, the Venicel Core. Uh, this is just under a sixteenth of an inch thick. Uh, on the outside here you see a hybrid of carbon fiber and Kevlar. Uh, and on the inside is the Kevlar fiberglass scrim material. Uh, the idea with this aft skin is that it would be molded flat on a sheet of mylar and then it is bonded to the ribs and structure of the wing and there's enough flexibility in this material to allow it to conform to the ribs yet not bow between the ribs uh, that's common with fabric and thin mylar type uh, surfaces. In other words you're going to get a surface that is almost equivalent to molded in female molds without the mold uh, which will help hold down on costs and make it easier for a home builder to complete. Uh, the major drawback that I've had with these materials is their durability issue. Uh, the Kevlar graphite dents uh, fairly easily. Uh, the uh, thin Kevlar uh, on the roar cell dents quite easily. It is strong enough and lightweight enough, uh, but in my mind not quite durable enough for regular usage where you're going to be pounding around outdoors and possibly setting it down in areas that uh, would have sharp objects that would dent the surface. Uh, so, uh, I'm taking an alternate look at 1 64th inch thick plywood. This is aircraft plywood. It's been around for a long, long time. Uh, it's built to, or it's manufactured in military specifications. Uh, it's extremely strong. And as you can see, it's uh, quite lightweight. Uh, equal size piece. Let's see the Kevlar here. Uh, the 1.7 ounce Kevlar with the scrim material and the roar cell is 12 grams. Uh, this piece is 17 grams. So for a 5 gram difference, uh, we have a lot less uh, manufacturing work to go through. Uh, it's close to a product that's ready to use. It uh, would easily conform to the ribs. And better yet, uh, if you do experience local buckling, say when the wing is under torsion, you do not lose structural strength. Uh, with composite materials, if you do have local buckling, it can be a problem for delaminations and loss of strength. Uh, so that brings me to the issue of how do you put a finish on it. Normally with the composite materials, uh, I've been using a sheet of mylar. I spray paint the mylar with an epoxy paint, uh, lay down the composite material on it while I'm uh, working with the epoxy and gluing it all together, and you literally epoxy the paint uh, to the Kevlar and you peel it off the mylar molding surface and throw that away. Uh, you get an extremely uh, thin layer of paint uh, and very lightweight and extremely durable. Uh, if we just took plywood and painted that, uh, it would be a bit of an issue because you're going to have a rougher surface, it's going to show the grain of the wood, and most likely people are going to spray on way too much paint. Uh, so I thought I'd combine the two processes. I'm going to use the mylar molding surface. I'm going to prepare this and paint it. I'm going to put a very light coat of paint 
on the plywood and then I'm going to vacuum bag it down to the mylar and after the paint is cured uh, we'll peel it off and we'll see what we get. I've never tried this before, maybe some of you out there have tried it. Uh, I'm very interested to see how it works out and we're all going to find out together. Uh, perhaps it'll be a surface that I can use for the aft wing surface that is uh, easy to build, uh, quick to manufacture, cost effective, durable, all the things we want. Now for paint today, and what I've been using on the project as I go along, is this tub and tile. It's available on Amazon. It's an epoxy paint, and I've gotten really good results with it. High sheen finish, very smooth, easy to work with, reliable, and cost effective. Uh, ordering in uh, gallons and so forth from other suppliers, you get in the hazmat shipping charges, it gets all very expensive. I think this kit on Amazon runs I don't know, somewhere around $50, something like that. Take a look, you'll find it. For mold release, I've used a wide variety of mold releases. PVA is quite popular for doing this type of work, but I found this on Amazon, it's MG Chemicals. It is a spring-on epoxy mold release. Uh, it is a little bit spendy, but so easy to use. It's a petroleum base. You spray on one thin layer on this mylar, and you'll always get a clean release. There's no waxing involved, no polishing, no extra spraying and you don't have to wait for it to dry. You spray it on, it's ready to use. Uh, for spraying, I like to use these little detail guns. Uh, they're very handy. Uh, I've been buying these at uh, Harbor Freight, uh, which most of you probably already know of. Um, they produce a really nice finish and they're very inexpensive. I buy these for $15 and I use them a little bit. Sometimes I don't even bother to clean them. If I'm doing a very large part that has a lot of cost in it, I consider the spray gun to be a part of the cost of making the part. And at $15, I don't even bother to clean them. I just take off my fitting and I throw the gun away. I know it sounds wasteful, but heck, look what you spend on chemicals and time trying to clean the darn thing up. And at that price, yeah, pitch them. So the, the piece that I'm gonna to use today uh, I've done a couple of seams on. Uh, as you see, I've done a seam parallel to the green, and I've done a seam perpendicular to the green, and sanded them on the other side to make them smooth. And I'm very interested to see how the paint finish is going to come out uh, with these seams. Uh, obviously, this is a, a critical item because the uh, sheets of the plywood are not large enough uh, to span the wing, and they're going to have to be seamed somewhere along the line and I want to make sure that I can get a nice smooth finish on the seams. Unlike the composite material, this is a challenge with the plywood. The composite materials are available wide enough uh, and long enough to cover the whole wing without seams. Uh, so this is an issue that I wanted to test out on this sample. So uh, I'm going to take a little break here. I'm going to go away. I'm going to come back. We'll have this painted and I'll have some paint on this surface and I'm going to show you how I'm going to lay it up in the vacuum bag. and. Uh, Tomorrow, in my time, and in a few minutes in your time, we'll be back and we see what kind of finish we get. Wish me luck. Okay, we're back. Uh, I have sprayed the mylar surface with the epoxy paint. I've also sprayed uh, the plywood. Uh, I have to admit that I've put about twice as much as I really wanted on each part, but considering it's my first shot at this, that's okay. Um, the amount of paint that's on the mylar surface is about equivalent to what I would do if I'm doing a composite layup on it. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit heavier than intended, uh, but the main purpose uh, of this experiment is to test uh, how the paint adheres, the type of finish that's achieved, especially in the area where there are seams in the plywood. So these are still quite tacky. It's only been about a minute since I sprayed them, and I'm just simply going to place the plywood right on the mylar like that wiggle it around a little there to get some good adhesion. I'm going to vacuum bag this uh, to make sure we have a good bond. Uh, I pre-prepped my molding board here with some uh, vacuum bagging tape and this is always fun disconnecting this and for those of you that have back, vacuum bagged before this will be the boring part. Uh, for those of you who haven't, well welcome aboard. Uh, so there's the tacky tape for the vacuum bag. Here's the vacuum bag itself. Uh, I have to pull the fitting off here, off the other end. A little sticky. There we go, we got that. Okay, and uh, before I mess up entirely, we need a little bit of release material. And I'm back. As you see, I use only the 
most sophisticated uh, bleeder and breather material available, which is paper towels. Uh, you gotta admit, you can't beat the cost on it. And the stuff works great. Uh, we don't really need a release layer on this. Uh, we're not really going to bond to the plywood. There's a little bit around a paint around the edges which will get stuck, but we'll just pull that off and sand it. It'll be fine. So let's get in the fitting for the vacuum bag pump. And we'll lay on the sheet of vacuum bagging material. This vacuum bagging material is kind of stiff. Uh, it's really only good for flat parts and it's a little lower cost than the nice stuff that conforms to all kinds of odd shapes. I just like to use this because of its low cost so long as I'm making flat parts this is good to go. So we got a fairly good seal there um, and I'm gonna we'll be back in a minute and we'll suck this down. Okay and I'm back. Uh, we have the uh, vacuum pump hooked up and make sure that this is stuck down well enough to start. Get that tight. Flip it on. Should be kind of quick. There we go. Quick towels are doing the job. Bleeding the air out of the whole part. We got good compression of the plywood down to the mylar. And in a few hours, three, four, five hours, tomorrow in my time, I'll be back. And you'll get to watch me pull this off in real time, and we'll all find out together <laughs> whether this is a good part, bad part, good process, bad process. Uh, it'll be fun. It's, uh, to me, the fun part of the engineering process. And I'll see you then. Welcome back. It's the next day for me, and we're going to take a look at the results of yesterday's experiment. I'll do this the quick way. Let's get the uh, vacuum pump out of the way. And take a little razor blade here, cut into this baby. And uh, we're doing this live, so you're going to see the results as I see them. Could be good, could be bad. It's a little damp this morning. I'm feeling that the epoxy paint might still be a little bit uh, uncured. Well, the first thing that I see is a very uneven finish. Uh, the uh, vacuum bag, in effect, uh, squeezed the paint out. Uh, you'll see that uh, it ran up around the edges quite a bit, and I feel that it's still tacky here on the breather layer of paper towel. Uh, especially in the thicker areas, which is interesting. We might not actually open this thing up at this time. We might have to come back for an update later. The epoxy is still gooey here, and I think the best bet is to leave this closed up, and we're going to come back a little bit later and see what we have then, but I would expect that the results are less than spectacular uh, given the uneven uh, result that we can see here so far. So bear with me and uh, we'll come back later today to see what we got. Well, okay, uh, if you're very observant, you'll see that there are now three pieces of wood instead of one. And I have a different shirt on. So while you've been patiently waiting for a few nanoseconds, another day has passed here and I've run off and made a couple more samples. And here's what I've learned. Probably the most important thing I learned is to follow the instructions. Uh, I've never uh, used any thinner with the tub and tile epoxy before. Uh, I was going to, I used some this time in order to uh, make it a little more sprayable. The basic problem was is I used a thinner that's not recommended on the cans. Uh, I used a thinner that's for standard epoxy resins and uh, what the can calls for is isopropyl alcohol and that difference caused the epoxy to not set during the layup of this part uh, so that's why it stayed gooey for a long time when i finally took it out uh, the volatiles flashed off and the epoxy blushed uh, overall a terrible finish learned one very important thing though these seams that i created um, 
that would represent joining of the larger sheets on the wing actually came out quite good. I can run my finger along these and they're very smooth and you'd never know that there was a seam there. So I'm very happy with that result. And I know that I could effectively use this material for wing skins and join them up in such a way that they're not gonna show uh, on the outside. So uh, once I determined that uh, violation of the instructions is a bad plan, I went off and uh, made a couple more samples a couple of different ways. Uh, this sample here has many of the same issues as the first one. Uh, there's a blushing uh, of the uh, epoxy uh, when it was removed from the molding process. And also you can see through the epoxy uh, into the wood grain and it's not perfectly smooth. This sample was made by uh, spraying epoxy uh, paint on the mylar surface and then letting that cure most of the way and then spraying epoxy on the wood itself as a method of adhering the wood to the epoxy. Uh, the ad adhesion is quite good. Uh, there's no delamination here, but you don't get a really smooth surface. It's not glossy, not good enough for a final finish. This one comes very close, and if I move it around a bit here, you'll see that it's quite glossy. How this sample was made is I once again sprayed epoxy paint on the mylar, let that cure most of the way, and then I applied uh, epoxy laminating resin to the wood itself and used that to adhere the wood to the paint. And that worked out quite well. That's very analogous to the process that I use for the composite layups where we have a foam core and a backing skin. The uh, finished result here is spotty because I did this very quick. I wasn't being careful. I'm sure that I could achieve a finish that is what I want for the aircraft using this process. This process a little bit heavier. Uh, it's hard to tell how much epoxy you're putting on the wood to bond it to the paint uh, because it's clear it just disappears. So I think that for the next go around, I'll make a larger sheet of this that I can apply to some simulated ribs and see how that works out. And when I do that process, I'm gonna add a dye pigment uh, to the epoxy so that I can see how much has been spread on the wood before it's adhered. Okay, so the uh, weight penalty for this application method was two grams on top of eight grams, a 25% increase. That's a little bit too high in my mind. I'd like to get this down around uh, one gram uh, to add this amount of paint. Uh, when I make a larger sample, uh, we'll see if we can achieve that uh, level of refinement uh, to keep the weight down. So uh, overall, uh, pretty happy with this method. Uh, going to move forward with it and try some larger samples. I hope you stay tuned to my channel and see how things work out. And also, please uh, visit my GoFundMe site. Check out the link that's coming up here and find out how you can help support development of this aircraft. Uh, thanks for watching. See you on the next segment. Bye.